I was in college in the 1990s during the dot-com boom, and most of my classmates were headed off to Wall Street and Silicon Valley, but I wasn't ready at age 22 to sit behind a desk. I wanted something more real. My choice came down to the Peace Corps or the Marine Corps, oddly enough, and I ultimately chose the Marine Corps. I got a great piece of advice very early in my training from an officer who said, Nate, never be in a rush to get your Marines killed. So it's a constant balance between accomplishing the mission and taking care of people. And an Iraqi gentleman flagged us down on the side of the road and said that a rocket propelled grenade had been fired and landed in his backyard but didn't explode. The Marines at that point were forbidden from blowing up this unexploded ordnance. We couldn't just leave it there. I asked for volunteers in the platoon and two of my Marines said they would crawl up and put plastic explosive on this grenade. So I stood there with my heart in my throat as they crawled up and crawled back. And we crouched behind a wall and all the Iraqis crouched down with us. We blew it up. There was this thunderous explosion, a huge column of dirt and dust in the sky. And the village cheered. The mission I was asking them to go on had to pass two tests. First, I had to know that whatever I was asking my men to do was morally right. I didn't care about the politics or the strategy, the big picture, but our little piece of it had to be morally right. And second, I had to know that if anyone were killed after the war, I had to be able to go to someone's hometown and sit down in a living room with his parents and explain to them honestly why their son was killed working for me and why I had thought it was worth it. That sets the bar tremendously high. Yet, in a war, you clear that bar every single day. And that's just the reality of leadership under fire.